So let's see, did we get a number for this? What did you get there? Go ahead, take your time. That's right, so now we can just solve this equation for Q. Mm -hmm. And you ended up with 1.26 times 10 plus 6. Did that number come out positive or negative? Um, I got positive. Good. Theoretically, Q's could be negative, so mm -hmm. it's good to notice that the math showed us that heat was being absorbed during this process. But that makes sense. It's going to be positive just from looking at that because the gas is expanding, right? Uh, let's see here. It's a little bit trickier than that. We know that it needs energy to do this work, but the energy could come either from heat or by using its own internal energy. So theoretically, uh, in some cases, you could get all of the energy from the internal energy to do the work and you wouldn't get any from the outside, um, outside environment. But that would only be for an adiabatic process. So, um, and so yeah, you're, you're basically right in this case. It looks like heat is being absorbed uh, uh, because we're using that energy to do work. In fact, in this case, I guess the internal energy wasn't decreasing. We got that the internal energy was increasing uh, because so much heat was absorbed. So much heat was absorbed that there was enough energy both to do the work and to raise the internal energy. All right. But that shows you how um, things can be misleading. You might look at this and say, oh, it's doing work, so it must be losing internal energy. But in this case, that was more than counterbalanced by the heat. So it's good to check the signs. Uh -huh and the equations. All right, well, I thought this was, uh, this was hard. Um, I didn't see the, the right approach the first time I looked at it, yeah. but it's a pretty typical type of uh, problem. So to, uh, to, what was the way we were thinking about doing this last time? We were thinking about doing this based on cycles and based on saying that delta U for the whole cycle is zero. Uh, but that was turning out to be much more complicated and confusing. You could do it that way, but this saves you a lot of time. In fact, you can see, even though this was a long problem, we never really had to use the idea that this was a cyclic process. So you don't want to be tempted into thinking that you always have to use focus on the fact that something is cyclic, that sometimes is important and sometimes it isn't. Yeah. But your first plan, plan A, should be to focus on the individual processes. Because if you focus on the whole cycle, that gives you a lot more steps and it eats up all the time on the test. Well, I made uh, a handout for the stuff we went over last time. You should kind of have that in your notes. You. But anyway, this just goes over all the basic right. different types of processes that we went over. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we talked about last time again was the formulas that involve C sub V and C sub P. Okay. So we saw that this is a formula that we can use to find the delta U in any situation. We saw it's confusing because in, if you wanted to find heat, you can only use C sub V to find heat for a constant volume process. But if you want to find energy, you can always use C sub V. That's a little bit confusing, but that's why there's two separate equations here. If you look at the top, you can see that for any process, you can use C sub V to find the energy, but the only time you would use C sub V to find the heat is for a constant volume process. That's what the V stands for. Uh, to find the heat for a constant pressure process, you would use C sub P. Mm -hmm. Now we briefly talked about the difficulty with using these types of formulas is that they don't have pressure and volume in them. But the problems you're going to be given are going to be focusing on pressure and volume. So we just saw a trick for getting around that. Even though this doesn't have pressure and volume directly, you can substitute the pressure and volume in using the ideal gas law. That's something most students don't think to do, but uh, it can definitely come up on test. So we can use the ideal gas law in terms of changes to get rid of N delta T and replace it with delta PV over R. And then something else we saw is you don't even need to know what R is to use this because when you plug in for C sub V, that's going to have an R term in it as well. So the R's are going to cancel at a later stage and you'll be left with delta P sub V. And I just made some notes of that here. So I showed that here's the original formula, but here's the formula you get using the ideal gas law to substitute for N delta T. Mm -hmm. And we should know in the back of our mind that in a second the R is going to cancel when you plug in for C sub V, as it says down here. And I just made the same note for these other formulas um, for isobaric and isochoric processes. Any uh, NC, so Q equals NC sub V times delta T. Again, you can get rid of the N delta T. Notice that for a isobaric process, the pressure is constant. So you don't need to focus on the change in pressure, just the change in the volume. And for an isochoric process, 
the volume would be constant. So you can you know, just focus on the change in the pressure. Okay. Whereas in this problem, they were both changing, so we had to focus on both. Okay. Another thing that comes up a lot here is they'll usually give you pressures in atmospheres, and then you need to convert those into pascals. Okay. <coughs> So you should think in terms, I tried to set up the, uh, the chart here in terms of the three variables. Notice that here I got one row for how to find delta U, one row for how to find Q, and one row for how to find work. So for any problem you're working at, usually they're going to ask you for one of those three variables, and then you have to figure out, kind of, and then maybe you have to figure out maybe the other two. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, well, if you can figure out any two of the variables, you can always figure out the third, because we can use the uh, first law of thermodynamics. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, uh, so in this case, we were thinking about the three variables. We couldn't use the special formulas again, but we knew what the work was, and we could use our general formula that finds delta U in any situation to find the key. All right. Okay, well now would be a good time to go back and do this whole problem again. So you should have the whole problem in your notes from last time, because there was a bunch of different steps that we had to put together. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.